we've got an exciting episode this week because it's all from a guy's request on on YouTube. His name's Darren. He sent he sent a question a week or so ago, and his his question is. I would love to hear you two talk about spirits connected to the tarot and the summoning and summoning of spirits. Specifically, the spirits of Libra 231 you mention in your book, The Tarot and the Magus. Big subject. Yeah, but, you've paid a lot of attention to the Libra 231 in your book, eh? Yes, you've read my book, haven't you? Yeah, it is, and it is a fascinating subject. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't I didn't write that book. We, well, the book was was there to, to to write about the techniques of the opening of the key spread, card counting, pairing, and numbering, basically. And we we my publisher suggested we 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 do eleven chapters. We didn't want to do twenty two or seventy eight. And so this is essentially pairing the cards up. Okay, so we did the Aleph. The first chapter is Aleph, Aleph with Tau, or the Fall in the Universe, and then Beth and Magus with the Aeon card, and, and so on. While I was writing that book, the spirits of Libra 231 turned up, as well as Goetia. And actually, even though the book is presented as a kind of meet your holy guardian angel kind of thing, it's actually a book of magic. It's the Golden Dawn system and Crowley system. Did you find that, Bart? Um, near the end, you do, it. Eh? Yeah. Once you go really near the end, it's all about magic. Because, all right, you have 11 chapters, but just like Crowley did a bit, you save the best for the appendixes. <laughs> we also write, I also, I've forgotten this. I mean, because we've talked about IAO fairly recently, especially in the workshops I did last year. And I wrote about it in 2003. I've forgotten all about it. And also... I also write about um, the general exordium that was written by the Golden Dawn. I think Alan Bennett wrote that. There's 11 lines to it, so it kind of fitted in perfectly. And I had a number of visions. The general exordium would be a nice subject for a future episode. It would. It would. Make a note. So we're going to... Um, you know, we're, we're, there is a pattern to these things. We don't actually see the patterns of the episodes when we start it, but they end up being a pattern. And it's like we're sort of, it's a journey of exploration that we're going on with this. We start off on one thing, then we find another, and then we find another. And it's, it expands further and further out. It's so we're on a journey together. All the journey, yeah. Because essentially the tarot is the entire system of the Golden Dawn and Crowley system as well. The, the whole of the, the magical system, the Golden Dawn, Crowley, the, the OTO and everything, is spaced and structured around the tarot. But we're presented the tarot as some kind of fortune-telling thing. That's the least important of the things that are going on with this system. So, and, and as a result of writing... Um, the Tower and the Magus, you know, while I was writing it, spirits were turning up and saying, hi, Paul. <laughs> Who are you? Anything you'd like us to do? Um, it's like if someone sort of randomly asks you, you know, we'd like me to do something for you. Your mind goes blank, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> nothing particular, no. <laughs> so that's the difference. When you're working with this system, particularly the opening of the key, and the, the Toth Tarot deck, it doesn't have to be the Toth Tarot deck, but it helps. The spirits love when you work in that method. It's the energies, it's the whole, it's a system of energy that's moving around and the spirits love it because you're, it, it creates a kind of resonance, I guess, between you and the spiritual realms and, and everything else. And, and they just sort of like, oh, he's, he's doing our stuff. Sorry? Your system and this system, they are more free to... to totally. It, there's, you're, not, you're not telling him what to do. You're not saying, do this for me. Uh, there's no threatening or torture. No, no. I mean, if someone says, do this or else, you don't exactly jump up and do your best, do you? You know, you drag your feet. But that's why they usually have to be forced to do things as well, eh? Well, yeah, if you do it the hard way. Yeah, you know, but... if, 
this this way spirits come and go. It's like an open door. You're just getting on with life, and you know. And they, what happens is usually they show a picture of themselves, or you actually just see their name in capitals, or you know, in English. And so it's like, oh, that's so so. Uh, Garp was one who turned up in particular. I remember writing uh, the the Tower and the Magus. So that the entire book is 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 a um, is a grimoire. Because I notice as well on the tarot groups, you know, I mean, like, for example, if there's a post about the certain cards and then they go about, yeah, the divination and, and the astrology and the spirits in there and, yeah, and sometimes even alchemical, alchemical elements, but you never learn how to apply this knowledge. Yeah. What's the use of knowing that the the empress is salt? Yeah. When you're doing when you're doing divination. Yeah, it's it's because it's not relate. You know, you, there is an implied relationship because if it's a planet or a sign of the zodiac or other thing, yes, there is, but it's always done in isolation. And and the beauty of the opening the key spread is that you you. You're not you're shuffling, but you're cutting the cards into four piles. So all 78 cards are there. You're not dealing, like playing poker, you know, five cards each. Then you have a look at them, and, you, and the rest of the pack is put away. All the cards are there to be read. Um, it takes too long usually to go down that route. But, um, but they are all there, and you can refer to and find any of the cards you want in the other piles if they don't appear in the pile that you're looking at. So it's all there, and it's, it's the totality. Uh, it's a zero something because everything is there. So the other side is going to be naught, basically. So Crowley talks about naught equals two, but this is seventy-eight equals zero, basically. And so you, you, nothing is left out. And it's the relationship between those energies and things. There's is an excess or a lack or other things going on. They're the ones that help you find out what there is. And there's also a counting technique that you can use to, to actually determine what spirits you might be able to work with at that moment. The tarot will tell you work with the Goetia or two, three, one or other ones as well. So basically any spirit, if they have an astrological or numerological or an elemental aspect in some form, you can use a tarot to work with and find out what so you can you, you can find a spirit and you can actually do a, a reading about how it would go if you did work with that spirit or you can actually see it within the cars themselves as well you see so um, the tower does it all for you then it's just a matter of sort of it's, it's exploring like we do in our talks you know very often we don't know quite where they're going do we <laughs> <This Well>. sort of <laughs> go with the flow the script is rudimentary for these talks, and it shows sometimes as well, too, but that's another story. So, Darren, that's what we're going to talk about. There's the Libra 231 and the Tower and the Magus. I mean, basically, the two link together. They're not separate. No, it's... it's, it's this it's, is a bit... I, I, what was it? Kind of a mind to... thing that goes on there with that. In, in Phyllis Sickler, I, I'm not sure. I think it's in Phyllis Sickler's book. It says... A lot of tarot students are drawn to Libra 231 because of its simplicity. I had to read that again. Where was it? <laughs> I swear, a lot of students, because of its simplicity. Explain that one to me. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It, it's, um, if, if only. If only. Uh, um, I mean, he writes in an elliptical style anyway that, um, that, that doesn't, um, it's hard to follow sometimes as well. You know, he's, he's doing tests all the time. So it's not about testing at what level you're at, it's telling you what level you can comprehend things at. If, I mean, this, the spirits, this, we don't know where the spirits came from, Libra 231, but the fact that there is dualism, and, you know, Eliphas Levi sort of said the tarot is a dualistic system. So, you know, so it's, the, it's not the aces that start the system, it's the twos because it's a manifestation. So there's that duality there, this alchemy, solve coagula, and in the union of black and white and up and down in the six directions, and love, hate, every kind of duality. 
because that gives you the biggest range of energy. It's all based on duality. So logically speaking, yes, there would be two sets of spirits for, for things because there isn't one for the letters of the spirits, basically. So he Crowley sort of found a way of doing that. Um, so, but the fact that you're working in part of the system of the opening of the key spread is about duality. You start pairing cards from the outside to, uh, towards the middle. And it's not an easy technique. It's, it's one I don't go into so much because actually it's not a simple thing to do. It's easier to read three cards and co do card counting and elemental dignities than, than with the pairing. So it's a tricky sort of subject. So, so we're going to go into a uh, bit more on to Libra 231 in a minute. But first of all, as a bonus, Darren gets to get, have a tarot reading. And his question for this is, I'm, I'm feeling drawn in two directions. One is very, very family oriented and the other is more artistic and free spirited. Please help me choose which path to take. Without looking at the cards, I say, do the artistic creative spirit stuff. You'll never get rid of the family, they'll still be there. No, yeah, but come on. Uh, artistic life is not necessarily a happy life, you know? Well, a married life isn't either. Yeah, well, I know, but I know I don't. There's more, more artists chopping their ears off than married men. <laughs> well, only one. <laughs> I'm not sure he was married, was he? Anger. It was his wife that made him do it. <laughs> this, is, this is actually a very common question um, I see with women who come for a reading. And they're pulled, um, and it, it's, the, Jung, Jung writes a lot about this. That the term is individuation, and what it means is that when you're under the sway of your family, you could be 20, 30, 50, 60, 70 years old. But if you're still thinking in terms of your family, what your parents think, what your brothers and sisters, what your children, you're not an individuated person. You're, you're, you are the son and daughter of, or the wife or mother or sister of, or brother of. But when, but when you become strong in within yourself and, and express yourself, you can be that artistic and free-spirited person that you want to be. But the family is still there. I mean, it's a bit like leaving home. Yeah, you, you can know. be uh, an, an artistic, free-spirited married man. You can be. I, I think you're a limbic example there, Bart. I'm doing my best. I'm, I, because my wife lets me. <laughs> Keep the lady happy. Uh, happy wife, happy life. Yeah. <laughs> now, artist or party? Four of cups, luxury. Uh -huh. and... The hermit card. Yeah. So that's an interesting one. It's either he's got money, doesn't tell anyone about, about, or the way to do things is not tell him what you're up to. Keep it, yeah, keep, keep your own private things private. Yeah. I do, I have, in, in my, my uh, magical endeavors and my, my tarot and all, I do keep this, this is mine. I am in a relationship, I am a married man, I am a father, but this is mine. Yeah. I don't involve my family in this. Alio. It makes a change because most married men hide in the toilet, don't they, to escape everyone? <laughs> All right. Oh, bloody hell. Paul. Ta da! Uh, this is not tricky. <laughs> well, before we started making this video, we we're talking about how we're going to do stuff. Bart said, wouldn't it be funny if the just adjustment card appeared in because it wants to talk about relationships and duality? We don't fix these cards, you know. Honestly, we really don't. <laughs> is this is just the proof that whoever says tarot is bullshit is full of shit. This is the proof that this stuff actually works. Someone, 
someone yeah. might be taking the piss, but anyway. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't have any cards with me. It's all Bart does the cards, okay? Uh, if, if, you, if you think he's fiddling, direct your comments to him, not to me. <laughs> so we have the Ace of Wands, the Seven of Cups, the Borsch, and we have the Adjustment card. So what do you think, Bob? Let me have a look. So the boss is the one in the center. Mm. And uh, the boss, it is, that was the, that would be connected to the more artistic and free-spirited. You mean take drugs? But yeah, come on, artistic and free-spirited than being a rebel, eh? <laughs> I'm, I'm not advocating taking drugs here. I was just... I was just... Filling the dots of what Bart was saying. Mm, yeah, Angry we, drugs. Debauch, debauch is connected to uh, drugs and alcohols as well. Eh? Alcohol as well. It eh? is. Uh, it's, it's, it's the, it's, the it's, it's copper um, uh, turns green verdigris, and it's, it refers to that corrupting process that's going on. And it's, it's it's being confused about feelings as well, which is, you know, this these three cards. Perfectly illustrates <laughs> the question. He's pulled in two directions. The, the Ace of Wands is being on your own individual, doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. And the Justice card is obviously relationships. And there is that confusion that's going on. Um, and th there's, a, there's some other points in there is, is that uh, adjustment or, is Libra, 21st of October. September to the 21st of October, roughly about then. And the Seven of Cups, the Borsch, is, is, is a decanate of Scorpio, and Scorpio is a sign after. So it might be that maybe Darren's uh, awakenings or problems or issues arose around about October, November last year. So he's been stewing on this one. Um, and I always, my view on these things is, is you can have your cake and eat it. Okay. Yeah. You, can, you know, was, you, uh, you, you're a good example, Bart. You know, you're a good father and husband. And, and you're let out to play with Paul once a week, if you're good. <laughs> well, well, as I see it here, because this, this is actually basically a bit the same, it is like, I consider this a laying his egg you know, living up to his potential. Yes. Yeah. But this says that I do believe there is a warning in here. I mean, it says you, you should do what you really want to do. Yes. Do yeah. what thou wilt. But keep, Shall we the whole of the eye. law, which is the adjustment card? Yes. But here it is, but do keep an eye on your loved ones and your family. Don't ignore, don't... You have yeah. to take care... Don't you protect the ones you love. That's an interesting insight because basically you're saying is he needs to nurture... The emotional side of both aspects in his life. Although I would have preferred it if it would have been like this, but if, um, sorry, if it would have been like this, but you can't always get what you want, of course. <laughs> it's already very, uh, I, I'm already very astonished that adjustment was in here actually. Well, it, it is a perfect description of the, uh, I mean, I, I don't bother kind of speculating what cars come out because I'm usually wrong. But but that's a brilliant kind of um, example of how a tarot can work. We don't fiddle this, honestly. We <laughs> really don't. We had this conversation. Sorry? Were you already recording when we had, when we yes, said this? Yes, yes, yes. We, we might stick that in there. might stick that in there, yeah. It's funny that. Earlier, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> This is polarity, duality. So we just have yes, to... I know. Yeah, I, ju I just said that. It would be nice if we got adjustment for that one. Well, we'll see what come up, won't we? But... <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, it is basically it. So you have you you have this this dimension with the two extremes, which are the polarities, and the answer is just find your right place in the middle. So Libra two three one. It's not a very long um, document. Basically, it has two sets of 
22 squares ranged in three columns with one at the bottom. There we go, Bart. Yes, thank you. Oh. And they have these mysterious sigils on there. And they, yeah, that's the right way around, yes. And, um, and there, there, there is also a set of 22 verses that go with this as well. So the two sets of 22 spirits come to 44. 44 is the number of blood, dam. It's also the number of zaddy, the star. Um, as, no, it's actually Delhi, um, which, is, which is related to Aquarius. So this is all to do with blood, basically, and Aquarius. And in between those two pillars of columns, he, has, uh, he, he, he relates various letters to each other. And the first one is relating Aleph to Zadi. Um, Aleph plus Zadi is one plus 90, which is 91, which is the number of Amen. And Amen is part of the invocation, <coughs> excuse me, the invocation that, that, um, that begins any tower, tower ritual um, or tower reading. It starts with the IAO and ends with Amen. So, the book was written, Libra 231 was written in December 1907. Um, we don't know exact dates, but at the same time as Crowley was writing Libra 231, at least he was writing five or six other Libras at the same time. Not little ones, big ones. We've got the I list here. I can't even read two books at the same time. <laughs> You know, your head explode. So what's the first one, Bart? It is Libra 7, Lapidis Lazuli. Yes. Then we have Libra 65, Libra Cordis Sincti Serpenti. 65. Then we have Libra 66, Stellae Rubae. Yes. And then we have Libra 10, the Porta Lucius, which is the... Not to forget, excuse me, Patrick. Not to forget Libra Tav. Libertal, yes. the CD, that's a big one. That actually structures the, the levels of initiation within the Golden Dawn system and the, and the AA or OTO or whichever one you want to do. Then we have Libra Trigrammaton, which a lot of people believe is inextricably linked with Libra 231. And quite possibly Ararita as well. Hey, excuse me, I, should, I know I should do my homework better, but isn't Tau the, lo the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet? It is. Then wouldn't you automatically connect Libra Tau to Libra Aleph? Yes, you would. You just reminded me, and I was just kind of thinking about it when we're reading out the Libras, is to, where does 231 come from? It actually comes from the Sefer Yetzra, which is which was started about 2,000 years ago. And it relates the Hebrew letters to the, to the 10 numbers. And when you, if you take, if you pair the Hebrew letters up, there are 231 permutations of those letters. So you start with Aleph and Bet, then Aleph and Gimel, Aleph and Dalet, and so on, all the way through to Tau. And then gates. you start again with, hmm? They're called gates in the Sefer Yetzirah. They're called right? gates, yes. The gates, and then you go Beth with would go with Gimel, then Beth with Dalet, and so on. So it, it it kind of sort of creates a triangle, if you like. And there's lots of ways of permutating. Abelafia writes about this and and, and other mystical things. And uh, this is probably where the technique of I mean, this is pairing, which you've already talked about, and you can also see that as a system of card counting as well. Because well, they call it skipping, uh, you skip letters hey, in, 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 this, in the text. This is how creation was done. Yeah, yeah. Well, the golem. Yeah. The golem. Depending which way round you go, it's, you I can just, create or you can destroy yeah, the golem. Letters in the Hebrew alphabet. I, it was fascinating. I find that fascinating to read. And so, so, in parallel with the opening of the key spread, you're cutting it into four piles, which represents the four levels of creation. Plus, there is this pairing technique that goes in there. And the letters are related to the planets and signs of the zodiac. And of course, we have them as tarot cards as well, the major arcana. So there's this whole kind of 
working with the energy. So his energy is flowing backwards and forwards and around, which is what happens when you analyze an opening of the key tarot spread. And because of those energies, so he's seeing tarot as an energy rather than, oh, passive a representation of you know energy. fortune telling or look at a picture and stuff like that and because it's an energy you know to invoke or evoke it, it requires an energy essentially but the fact that you're doing all these energetic things means that the, the spirits are aware of what you're doing and they think oh he's, he's doing a good job on this let's you know let's give him a wave but now if you think about it, when people come to you for divination, they are actually secretly hoping for a bit of magic because why does one do divination? Because you want to see problems coming. Yeah, you want to so, deal with them. So with, with, if you've done the divination and the tarot reading properly, when those people leave, you have altered their future. Yes. Has been done. Well, I mean, quantum mechanics tells you that just the mere observation of a particle changes that particle. You know, you, know, you, you cannot not be not involved <laughs> with, with the object of creation perception. So every, everything you're seeing with that person, those cards, and you, all of all of you, the client and the tarot is changing probably a number of times during that situation. So sometimes, you know, when it comes out a little bit inconclusive or whatever, we'll often do the, say, let's do it, let's do it again, see what comes up. And the energy is often changed and, and things are a lot clearer than they were when it started. So it is a magical operation, cutting the cards into four piles and card counting and pairing and everything else. So divination is a side product, if you like. It's an entertaining one, it's what people see. But the, the real meat is within the energetic work that's going on. And that person doesn't never really see it. Because with, you know, when, I, when I read, if you see me reading cards, I'm not, you, you don't actually see me card counting or pairing as such. I'm just kind of aware of the energies and working with them anyway. So um, you can do that after a while. It's a bit like when you start to drive, it's mirror signal manoeuvre and you have to think about what gear I'm in and where do I look and all that sort of stuff. You know, ask a driver who's driving down and ask him what gear he's in. They, they're in a trance, they don't know what gear they're in, you know? So it, it's, it's, things become automatic and that's where you want to be. You want to, you know, rather than in some sort of um, constantly thinking, what do I next, how do I do it? You're not in the flow then. And then being in that flow is when these images and spirits also turn up as well. So it's a big time for Libra 231. So essentially, it's interesting because the two sets of spirits you can see as 2 times 20, 22 is 44. The actual text of the verses is 22, which is 66. You can also have those ones where he makes correspondences between them as well to add them all up. So there's a lot more going on than you think. And there's loads of people, you know, you can go into what the sigils mean and everything else. This is not the purpose of this. During a period of prolonged study and analysis of the sequences of cards used in this book, I had a strange dream. I was interrogated on the existence of, this, of a second fall by a group of spirits. I defended my case strong, strongly. I had not, had not heard of a, of a second fall card. And besides, the existence of two zeros is impossible. Actually, that dream, I think I was in a dentist chair and I was sort of, there's a, there's a classic film with Lawrence, De, uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Olivier where he's, he's been tortured by this guy in a dentist chair. So it wasn't very pleasant, I can tell you. So they're, they're, I think they're making a point there, you know. And so after some days thought, so I rearranged the question and considered the possibility that the fool could have two functions. If everything is, is ejected from the nothingness of the fool, then could it be that the fool was a gate that also had the inverse function. A day or two later, I was confronted with a spiritual problem that would not go away. I thought of the dream and the possible solution. So I created a negative space. Instantly, the problem disappeared. 
and simultaneously I received all 22 names of the Spirit starting with Amprodius. What that actually means is that they're all standing, I was standing there, I, I, I can remember the room I was in, it was in the living room of a friend in Texas. And, and the spirits are literally standing around me in the circle, and Proteus, Barachiel, Gargafiers, Dagdagil, and so on. All 22 spirits. It's sort of, you know, it's quite an extraordinary experience. So, in essence, the duality that we're talking about is the two folds that generate the, the spirits of Libra 2, 3, 1. And um, a lot of people have had negative experiences um, with in, in, invoking one spirit at a time. Uh, Donald Michael Gregg, in his book, Terror and Magic, he nearly died when he tried to invoke Ambrodius. So um, there is, you know, when you just, this is the fact that you're working with a fool. And there are actually two fools. He says in his diary for December 1907, Alistair Crowley writes, Curious vague depression most of the day. I think the Sigilla 22 have a very unpleasant influence. Um, so this is not exactly saying they're demonic or anything else. But, it, but the fact is that you need to have both of them all together. One way you can do it with card counting is you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. You probably could do both. You balance things out. Yes, Bart. My Latin is not the best, but when you read here in the title page, Liber Carcerorum Clifford Cumsus Genius. Yes. It does sound a bit like the Clifford is the negative side of the tree of life normally. But he's also saying, but he says the sigilla. He says a denta sigilla a nomina eorum. Um, so there's two, there's two sets. There's, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky, these things. Um, but if you have balance, it doesn't really matter because these things kind of cancel each other out. You have naught equals two. Or seven. Well, listen, we did no other than the great Crowley himself did. He loved revealing secrets. Yes, yeah, it's there. You know, we we you know we haven't gone into the particular spirits or anything else. But the fact is that the Tower of the Magus is received. You know. I didn't see it at the time like that because I was just concentrating on card counting and pairing everything else. But just the, just the circumstances evolved and half the book at least, especially the second half, is all about magic. Um, the Goetia are involved in all of this as well, as well as Libra 231. And it's just working with those energies. Just, it, it, is, it is a spiritual transformation that goes on. It's real power and energy. And because we have balance, we're not going to go into the dark side as such. You don't need to. Anything you need to add, Bart? Yeah, I have this. I, all of a sudden, I have this thing in my head. You know, I am. I have been uh, nagging at you for uh, Paul. I do think you should write the second Taro and the Magus. The, the you know the sequel. Yes. Now, well, the sequels are never as good, you know. Well, I know you give me, you keep giving me the same answer, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to do a Frida Harris on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to, you'll have to, if, if you can't put it in a book, let's put it in a tarot game. <laughs> I'll use my best Photoshop skills to answer to your demands. You can let me make the fool eight times over again. I won't mind. Yes. Uh, it's, um, the more I know about Book of Toth and stuff, it makes it harder for me to think of, of, of surpassing or equaling or, or anything or getting even close to what he's done. But certainly I should be writing more books. We definitely should be doing more workshops and courses and things. So you can nag me on that one as well, if you like. But I hope you've liked this and give us some likes. Any comments, would appreciate that. If you want a tower reading or like Darren, You've got a suggestion for another video drop us a line and happy tarot readings and also if you want my book you can get it on uh, from paulusbala.com you can get a signed copy uh maybe best just to email me because it's you know it's the postage and 
all that kind of stuff. It's a bit of a nightmare sometimes. So um, drop me a line if you'd like a book signed, and uh, we'll do see what I can I can do for you. And join our Toth Tarot groups on Facebook. Yeah, on what is it? On the group Thoth Tarot on the book of Thoth Tarot Study Group. Yes, the book something. Of Thoth Study Group. Yeah, yeah, I, I swallowed a dictionary at that point, you know. And then you have not to forget Bart's Thoth Tarot Corner. We haven't, because you've mentioned it. <laughs> We're happy to chat on there, and um, see you next week. Bye. Bye.